So Vince. Brian Steinmetz, my man. Another Temple timeout today. How are you feeling, bro? Yeah, I, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Dude, what's wrong? Are you, you sure? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, dude. Dude, dude you're, gonna... you're still upset about this Temple loss, aren't you? Dude, I, I just don't understand. I don't get it. I just don't. Uh, 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 how, about we, how about we cheer you up with a little top 10 plays from their season? And you know what? I have, an, I have another call coming in, so I'll, I'll let you cool off. Well, one second, bro. Yo, Vince, it's Del Vaughn, what's up? I've been seeing this Temple Timeout show all over. Let me know if you ever need a guest. Yo, that is perfect. We already are talking about Pro Day, and the NFL Draft is coming up in April. I think you'd be the perfect guest. All right, this, this is crazy. But first, let's take a timeout. Hello and welcome into yet another edition of Temple Timeout, your weekly Sports Desk episode. Alongside my partner Vince Call, I'm Brian Steinmetz. Well, it was a short stint in the dance for the Owls, but we're going to try to forget about all of that as today on the show we're hosting NFL prospect Delvon Randall. Yeah, and as you've probably heard by now, Temple basketball is out of the NCAA tournament after a play-in game loss to Belmont. We'll get into that, hear from the players, but we're going to keep the morale high around here and start things off with the top 10 plays of the season from the Owls. We're going to start off with number 10. I'll, I'll toss it over to you, bro. We have a lot of stuff to get into. Yeah, a lot, a lot of players to choose from here, but I'm going to start off with number 10, Justin Hamilton dunked against SMU. This is a player Temple's looking forward to a lot in the future to, to grow as a leader on this team. Yeah, another sophomore Temple's looking forward to. Number 15, Nate Pierre-Louis. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of him on these highlights, but here's just Ooh. a steal in a Drexel game, just arrow, getting man. up. We're going to see a lot more dunks from him. Number eight, Quentin Rose, the ferocious throwdown against Tulsa. You do not want to get in the way of that dunk. Absolutely not. And we couldn't make a top 10 without including our man Shiz. A dagger three in overtime versus Wichita State. If only he saved this for the first round of the AAC tournament, then we probably wouldn't be dealing with, the, with what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, back to Justin Hamilton, an and one dunk against UCF. That was a big game for the Owls in the, in this, in the regular season finale. Uh, number five, maybe not the most flashy play, but this is what we call poetry in motion. Q Rose gets the finish from Nate Pierre-Louis. It was a half-court scrum that got out to that. My personal favorite, Nate Pierre-Louis gets the steal on the windmill jam. Mm. I, I, what can you say about this guy? He's everywhere. He's all, all these highlights. Yeah, and we're going to stay right with him here on number three. He gets a half-court buzzer beater versus Drexel in that game. What a big win. Another a big five game. Just good stuff from NPL. He's all over the place. Back to Quentin Rose here. Another throwdown jam over UCF. Again, the last game of the season. Mm. Big win for Temple. Statement win. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough in the tournament. Now what you've all been waiting for, the number one play. This is the same Drexel game, and who else is dunking the ball besides Nate Pierre-Louis? Behind the back, oop from Shiz Alston. Got to give a credit to our man, Brian Mathias, for all the footage that you've seen throughout this top 10. Great work from him all season long. Well, there you have it. Temple's top 10. Well, to go back to the reality of Temple's season-ending loss to Belmont. Uh, it was Belmont's first ever tournament win for them as senior guard Kevin McLean dropped 29 points on the Owls on just 14 shots. The Bruins as a team shot 52% from the floor and that was just too much for the Owls to handle. It was the last game ever for Coach Dunphy as well as senior Shiz Austin and Ernest DeFlacky. Brand, is it hitting at you at all that it's the end? <laughs> no, just, I'm just disappointed for the guys that we're not able to uh, continue on and go to Jacksonville and and play against a team like the University of Maryland and give a lot of credit to Belmont. They're a good team. Rick does a great job of coaching them. But no, to answer your question, Mike, I haven't thought too much about it. I will reflect uh, in the coming days. And again, I'm very appreciative of what Temple University gave to me, what the University of Pennsylvania gave to me. And uh, I'm a pretty fortunate guy. I just thank them for um, their work and allowing me and Ernest to get to the NCAA tournament like uh, we wanted to so badly. You know, me and Ern got here our freshman year and we haven't been back since. So I just thanked all the guys for their hard work and, uh, you know, just helping us get back here. Moving on now, Temple Football's Pro Day has came and went here on North Broad Street. As we mentioned last show, 13 participants from this year's team 
on Monday, this was earlier this week, and all of these seniors were from the winningest Temple football class in history. And NFL scouts gathered in the Star Complex. Of course, Rock Yassin and Rykel Armstead were big attractions after their appearance at the NFL Combine. And so was Michael Dogby. How about this? 34 reps on the bench press, bench press. That would have been third in the NFL Combine this year that he wasn't even invited to. But not to mention our guy Delvon Randall. CBS has him as the 24th ranked safety in the draft. And finally, wide receiver Ventel Bryant. Here's someone not invited to any senior games, but he's hoping his production can make him a case. We talked to him and first round hopeful Rock Yassin after the pro day. No, I, I didn't really. Uh... I didn't really get upset or anything about not getting invited to the combine. You know, I had to work my whole life. Uh, I came in the temple, you know, 169 pounds. I weighed in today at 209. So just coming in every day, just working as hard as I can just to showcase what I can do and just prove myself each and every day. I feel like I did that well today. I mean, you look down that line and you see, you know, you understand that you have to run a good time, you know, and everything you work for, you know, since you started college, you know, it's all on that line. And, you know, you look down at the end of that line, everything you want, out of this, it's like at the end of that line, so you run as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and get to that. So with, with these five that we mentioned in the conversation for NFL teams, notice their CBS Sports position rankings, and that's among all other NFL prospects. Look, look, look at Rocky Yassin, project, ranked, ranked fifth among all cornerbacks in the draft and projected to go rounds one through two. You see the rest of them there, Michael Dogby and Raquel. And as we know, Temple has been a hotbed for NFL talent in recent years, and that includes many free agent signings. As you can see here, that will most likely be the case again this season. So the trend is continuing. And again, all these players were leaders on the team and all were high character guys who players really looked up to. And that's a great trait to have when entering the NFL draft and free agency. It's just relentless effort. Yeah, Brian, you, meant, you mentioned relentless effort. Joining us now, the longest tenured single digit player on that pro hopeful list. We got the safety, Del Von Randall. First of all, Del, thanks for coming on the show. No bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right, so yo, we're going to start off the show a little unconventional, right? So we're going to warm up with a little game of heads up. You got, so, so what's going to happen is I'm going to give you this stack of cards, and I'm going to give Vince this stack of cards. And you're going to place it on your forehead, and then there's going to be a word on there. And Vince and I are going to help you guess what the word is. And then you, you and I are going to help Vince guess what the word is. And we have about 45 seconds on the clock. And sounds pretty simple, right? Yeah. All right, so the only way to see who goes first is a classic rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Got it. I cheat, though. So <laughs> it is, ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Uh, mm. All right, first up. That's our first. Uh, so we help. We help. <laughs> yeah, so we give him like clues as to what, that's what it is. All right. All right, so we got 45 seconds on the clock. 45? You good to go? All, All right. Still. All right, this man is an Olympic athlete. He, he's the most decorated Olympian of all time. Uh, swimmer. Sorry. Michael Phelps. Yep. Uh, coffee shop on campus. The best the best place to eat on campus. Richie's? Yep. Hey, I saw your tweet recently. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got uh, a cereal. They're like little, they're like little circles. Uh, it's Toucan it's a, is the mascot. Yeah. Fruit Loops. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, host, uh, he hosts his own TV show. Uh, you were on the TV show. Steve Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so it's a body of water. It borders um, uh, uh, Europe and Africa Bro. In, in the middle. <laughs> it's also a type of salad. Pass. Pass. Uh, direct <laughs> salad. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, all right, we are out of time. 45? We are out of 45. Oh, what do I get? How many do we get here? We got four. about, we got four. All right, all right. four, four, four seconds, not bad. All right, Dalvon, you ready, 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 ready? I think I'm, I think that's good, that's good, that's good. All right, he was all the, right. the he, hold on, clock ready? Clock's ready? All right, all right. 45 seconds. All right, the, the head coach of Temple Basketball before Fran Dunphy. He's like the, uh, I know his name, he came to visit us. Uh, he's, like, he's real old now? Yeah, John Chang. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys practice on 10th and? Diamond. Yep. Oh, that's Diamond Street? It's Diamond. Oh, it's, yeah. it's Diamond. It's, Diamond. Uh, it's, a, it's a HBO series, you know, like, uh, it's real famous right now. It's like, there's like 15 seasons. It's like, there's like, it's drag, like mythical. dragons are in it. Uh, new seasons are, new seasons coming out next month. You can pass it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, this is the process where plants take light and convert it into energy. Remember that word, that long word? From Medicaid. like science class, like when you were young? No. It's like, all right, pass, all right, pass. pass. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, legend for the Pittsburgh Penguins. 
87 on, Crosby? on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right. all right, and we're out. Oh, we'll give you five more seconds since we fumbled. Um, all right, this angle is, is larger than an acute angle. It's over over 90 degrees. <laughs> so here's an Remember, acute. All right, it's not acute. It's, it's not acute. It's it's bigger than 90. Right, so right. here's 90 degrees. This is, a, this is acute. What would this be? We're at we're at time. How we're at time. We How many we got? Three. I think <laughs> hey, right, we got three. I think I have four. Right, we got that's three. a little edge. That's not that bad. All right. Well, all right, you know, what? let's actually get into this interview though. You the, after the pro day now, you're ranked in the top half of all safeties according to CBS, the 24th ranked safety in this draft. Do you think you've done enough to get drafted? And what would it mean if you did get drafted in April? Uh, I felt like I. I have done enough, you know, I probably could have did a little more, but uh, I, I, I definitely feel like I've done enough. Um, and what it means for me to get drafted, uh, it would mean the world, you know, uh, I always dreamed of getting drafted, you know, uh, I'll be like the first one out of my area, the Hill District in Pittsburgh to get, like, make it to the NFL and stuff like that. You know, uh, my mom, you know, I, my mom would be good, my dad would be good, my siblings and stuff like that, so it's, it's going to be a blessing if I get drafted. Now, we, we talked about how Temple's having recent success in the NFL draft in years past. Um, how, how much do you utilize advice from previous Temple Owls who went into the NFL? I mean, do, do you talk to them at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, I talk, I talk to uh, most of them, honestly. I still talk to Tavon, uh, I still talk to Champ, um, Kirkwood, Sharif, Jacob. I talk to Tyler, Medikevich still. You know, I talk to a lot of those guys. You know, uh, they told me when I was, like, when I was younger, as a freshman, they, they knew I was going to be a pro and things like that. So, you know, that relieved me. but. You know, I just always took advice from them. You know, uh, there was a point in time where I thought I wasn't going to be able to play as a freshman, you know what I'm saying? But they pushed me and I, I just followed their lead. And now they're in the pros and they're, they're handling their business, you know? Gee, so you ended up playing 12 games in that, in that freshman year. And you went on for 54 career games. That's like close to the maximum in four years for any player. When you look back on your, on your, seat, on your career at Temple, do you have a favorite playing memory and what has Temple meant to you? I know that's a loaded question, but favorite playing memory and what has Temple meant to you? My favorite playing memory, uh, well, I would say every game, you know, just going out there, just <laughs> playing for Temple, you know. Uh, just playing with guys who, who I see are like successful now, you know, that might have been my all-time favorite playing in the championship games and stuff like that. You know, uh, I played in two of them, so I feel like the second one was my my most favorite because I was actually starting, like, like starting my sophomore year, and we won, and that was a blessing. And the other question you said, what do it mean to play for Temple? Yeah, like what's, what's it mean uh, to you? I mean, to me, it means it means a lot. You know, uh, wearing that Temple on the front of my jersey, you know. Uh, Everyone knows that we're the toughest college football team out here. You know, uh, we're the toughest guys. We come from, you know, we come from 10th and Diamond. You know, uh, it's grit down here in Philly. You know what I'm saying? So just playing for Temple, that means, that means a lot. You know, uh, just the brand, the toughness, you know, that's, that's worldwide. Yeah. One last question now, we'll let you off the hook. If, if you could go back in time and talk to a younger version of yourself, you know, heading into the NFL draft next month, what would you tell yourself in order to not prepare yourself, but give you like a heads up, like, hey, like you can really do this. Like, what, what, would, you, what would you tell yourself? Uh, I would probably tell myself, you know, uh, just ignore all the outside noise. You know, uh, I was getting too high on the moment at some times. I was getting too low on, like, on the moment sometimes. You know, uh, but people are always gonna have things to say. You know, uh, they, they're not you. They don't know where, where you come from, what you've been through, and how like how hard it is to really play for Temple University and things like that. You know, uh, so like I said, I would just tell myself, you know, just block out all the outside noise. You know, just keep my head down, just ground like I've been doing, but like I know how to do it. So if, if you could talk to, the, say, say it's like a 12-year-old version of yourself. Say you were saying, like you're about to, you're at, since it's, you're in line to kind of be drafted or sign with the free agent. What would he say if he found out that news that this is all about to happen right now? I never thought you would have done it. I never thought you would have <laughs> You know, you dreamed of it, but now that it's here, you just like, wow. Like, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, honestly. Yo, there you have it. Delvon Randall, Temple Football's very own. Everyone be sure to tune into the draft on April 25th. And with that, we're all out of timeouts for today's edition of Temple Timeout. You know where to find us on all of our social medias. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back here same time, same place next week. For Vince Call and our special guest, Delvon Randall, I'm Brian Steinmetz. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.